<laughs> so tell us Listen, the first that was a time. Deal back then. I'm tell us the first time you saw the internet in color. <laughs> the first time I saw the internet in color, um, I was doing a physics project. Um, where I would come in after school and work on this project and my physics teacher had to leave early on certain days and I got to stay there and throughout those days I figured out how to hack his account to get on the internet through the school system and I got to see the internet with in color which was amazing. <laughs> Something so, I did not get to do at home. So, so you, you really have the hacker gene. I do, you, I do, but I promise I only use my evil for good. <laughs> okay. I'm Beth Tucker Long. I work in tech, and my job is to help developers write better code. Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast Drupal Technology, Community, and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community, and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Beth Tucker Long and I are at the first uh, ever PHP World Conference. It's happening just outside of Washington, D.C. I was thrilled to be invited to be a keynote speaker here, um, which is pretty exciting. Got that past me now, and now I'm thrilled that you're able to come on the camera with me. <laughs> Indeed. So you've been really, really active in open source and especially PHP for a bunch of years. Why don't you yes. introduce yourself okay. and give us like a really a brief resume of, of who you are and what you've done. Once again, I'm Beth Tucker Long, and um, I got involved in open source because when I first got involved in PHP, I was previously a Perl programmer, and what I needed to do was learn PHP really fast because I was hired as a Perl programmer and then handed a PHP code base, and they didn't realize that it wasn't Perl, and so <laughs> things needed to be fixed right away. So I had to learn PHP really, really fast. And I had to ask questions online to do that, which was something I was not fond of doing in the Perl community. And the PHP community was so nice, and they answered all my questions and helped me out, and I loved it, and I never looked back. Oh, and wait. I've been in PHP ever since. Okay, so, so, <laughs> so that's like your first PHP memory. Yes. When was that? What version of PHP was it? That was PHP 3. Three, excellent. Yeah. And what made you stay with PHP? Because everybody was so awesome. Uh, how could I leave? I mean, everyone was so nice, and I learned so much talking with everyone so quickly that I, I just couldn't get enough. And now I love being a part of the community and making sure that every new person that comes in has that same experience I did of that welcoming, loving, teaching. Right. Yeah. Um, th so that sharing of, of knowledge is so important. Mm -hmm. um, I love... Uh, when we figure something out, you know, our first instinct is like, I've got to go tell people I'm about tell this <laughs> because then they don't have to go through all this crap that I went right, through, right? right? I can, you know, we can go solve the much more interesting yeah, things. They yeah, they can solve my next problem for me while I solve this one for them. <laughs> okay, so you've had a great, let's get back to your path through yes. PHP. Mm -hmm. What happened then? What happened then? So I was working for a conglomerate of scientific societies at the time, and we implemented a lot of really cool PHP stuff and did a lot of neat things with PHP. And then um, about seven years into that job, I went to my very first PHP conference, um, which is where I got to know PHP Architect. And that's how I started doing training for them. And then switched into the magazine when they learned that I could spell things correctly. And so I switched over to being the editor of the magazine. And Wow, spelling and everything. Yes. Who knew that all that book learning was gonna come in handy? I know, right? <laughs> So we met at PHP Benelux a couple of years ago yes. while you were still at PHP Architect Magazine. Correct. You said a really nice thing a couple of days ago to me, um, and I'm going to see if, I'm paraphrasing, but sure. let me see if I get this right. You said that you've moved to Code Climate, mm -hmm. which is an automated code quality assurance tool set, mm -hmm. um, because all of these years, your goal has been to help developers develop better. Yes. 
And now you're back writing code again instead of writing about how to do it better. Yes. Tell us about what you do now, where you work, and um, how that makes a difference in, in the world. Mm -hmm. So I work for Code Climate. We do automated code review. And we have the greatest mission ever of helping developers write better code. But we are not just a normal automated software thing where we give you a list of everything you've done wrong and then leave you alone. Check we, these boxes, fix yeah, these exactly. things. Yeah, exactly. Fix these things and, you know, run us again. But what we want to do is not just give you a list of what you've done wrong, but we want to make sure that you understand why those things were wrong. We want to teach you how to fix the problems. And so we have these awesome read-ups that go through and teach you why things are a problem, where the security vulnerability is coming in, why it's a performance hit, because we want you to learn this so you can code around it next time and not run into these problems again. And we're going to actually teach you how to fix these problems in those read-ups as well and give you lots of information about different presentations you can watch, educational resources. We've collected all this stuff so that you can just get in there, learn about it, fix the problem, and go on to be a better developer. And as great as that sounds, it's even greater because all that information is freely available. Freely available. Not only is all of that tutorial information freely available to anyone who searches for it online, so I can be a better coder just by looking at that already, mm -hmm. but you do free testing forever for open, for source, open repos source repositories, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. So we definitely want to keep supporting the open source community. The open source community has done amazing things for all of our careers as well, and we want to make sure we're giving back. So open source repositories are free to scan always. Talk about the advantages you have being an open source software developer. Okay. Um, advantages would be, first of all, everything's free. <laughs> well, that's a big advantage when you're selling it to some, you know, especially if you're selling it to a boss. But... Although the boss talk is technically, we can test this at a cost of my time. If you're sure. willing to let me do this for a week, I don't have to pay for any tools, I don't have to pay for anything except the laptop you already gave me and fiddling with this. Mm -hmm. Very true. Um, I think the biggest advantage, though, for open source is that you aren't just the only developer out there making sure the code is good. Um, you have teams of developers all over the world double-checking the code, making suggestions for ways to improve it, adding features that you can use. It's just, I mean, it's like having the entire world as your development team instead of just you by yourself somewhere in an office. I was, I was picturing the, the world of a few years ago today uh, during my keynote where to, do, to, make, to get something new for your computer, you had to go somewhere and grab a tape, grab a disc, right, and then mm -hmm. hope it would work. And, you know, and I feel like the proprietary world or when you're working on something, um, there are legitimate reasons for doing so, but when you're working on something that you cannot share, you cannot talk about, I just feel... That must be the loneliest feeling. Mm -hmm. And anyone with imposter syndrome going on who's not allowed to ask what the best practice is, right? Or maybe right. it's a technology that's not actually open source and it's just a bunch of black boxes. Mm -hmm. That must be terrifying. Right. We're, we are so used to this other world where um, most things are solved pretty well and we can improve on those solutions and we can create new solutions, that, mm -hmm. but then we get help yeah. building them up. Yeah. Well, and we don't have to know everything. We just have to know the person who does. So I don't have to be an expert in every single aspect of my field. I just have to know the experts. <laughs> so, right. Or, or, or how to yeah. Google to find them. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, I mean, if you're entirely closed source and you can't have anyone help you, then you have to be the expert on everything, which, I mean, that is a huge responsibility that I'm not interested in <laughs> trying to claim that I can do. I, I think it's a very rare person who could be an expert in everything. So. Here at PHP World, yes. I think we are attending possibly the first or, or an early physical manifestation of what a lot of people are calling the PHP Renaissance. Mm -hmm. um, Symphony developers are showing up at Drupal events. Drupalists are showing up at Symphony events. So exciting. Everybody's sharing code. Yeah. Talk about what it's like to be in PHP now and this, this, this moment and, and where things are going. Mm -hmm. 
That's kind of interesting because as programmers, we've always had a tendency to make fun of anyone who's not using our specific technology or area. And lately, there's been this awesome motivation to stop doing that and we're starting to learn from other languages and other technologies and it has brought about so many amazing new features in PHP and so many new, I don't know, things to make our lives easier and I think we're really starting to appreciate that fact and I love the fact that we're bringing more people in through this sort of, you know, I guess renewed appreciation for for outside things um. right so contributions to the symphony routing component which is inside Drupal 8 right also make easy publish better mm -hmm. and also make the symphony content management framework better mm -hmm. that's pretty powerful right and more Drupal developers understanding how symphony works means more contributors to symphony so. and co-joining those two communities specifically, but everything else that we're attached to, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more eyes on the code. Yeah. It, we've got to be doing better on security, for example, mm -hmm. in the end, uh, yeah. by the number of users of these, of these various components. Mm -hmm. I think this is going hand in hand with the real professionalization of PHP. You know, so many people for so many years um, have been kind of down on it, like the real programmers have been down on PHP, <laughs> but uh, PHP is getting a, a language spec now. Mm -hmm. the, the core contribution development process has been accelerated mm -hmm. um, and really, really codified in, in very positive ways, I think, mm -hmm. and new versions are coming out rapidly. Performance is going through the roof. And then, um, you know, there's also this flourishing of competitive cooperative ideas Hip Hop Virtual Machine, PHP NG, um, Anthony Ferrara's crazy PHP compiler, which I can't mm -hmm. wait to see um, turn into something more, right? Mm -hmm. Where are we going? We're talking about the future of PHP right here, the technically. So where are we going? Where are we going? Um, we're going faster. <laughs> we're going to be going faster. Um, I think we're moving towards a lot of more high-end professional tools to really help us automate a lot of the stuff we used to do by hand so that we can really move forward into solving gigantic scaling issues. And I, I don't know, I'm excited to see where we're going. <laughs> I'm excited too. I'm really, really excited. Okay, so one more time, shameless pitch. S shameless pitch. Uh, code Climate, automated code review. And um, find your local user group, usergroups.ug. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much yes. for taking the time to talk with me. It's really, really great to no see problem. you again. Yes. Thanks again. Thank you. All right. <laughs>